Today, I want to share with you the dismantling of this CR500 for Dirt Bike Magazine. All right, welcome back everybody. Hope everyone's feeling good. Today, we're gonna finally tear into the CR500. It's been a couple weeks and I've had to get some ducks in a row, but I'm feeling good now and everything's organized. Parts will be going to certain people. Things are in place and I feel really good about that. So today we're gonna to start tearing into this thing, get a look at what's underneath the tank, how all the components look. Judging by looking at it from the outside, it looks outstanding for its age. It's a 1990, has most of the stock components on it or is completely stock actually, minus bars and some bark busters that are pretty heinous. But anyhow, we're gonna tear into this bike, see what she's made of. Behind the 500, we have the 2004 CR250. I'm going to do a separate teardown video on that. I'll keep them segregated, but the builds will be going on at the same time. So I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Step one in taking a bike apart is making sure you have somewhere to keep all the components as they come off the frame. I'm going to use this wire basket shelving back here. Otherwise, you end up with stuff everywhere. It's no good. Currently, uh, I need to clean this sucker off. We have pieces of Project Disruptor, the YZ300 build. You guys can check out other videos for that. Some sponsorship parts, wheel set, and uh, you know, a bunch of miscellaneous this and that. So I'm gonna be using that for the bike breakdown. I have another one in a trailer out back, and that way each bike will have its own shelving unit. It'll be easy to find things. I can grab and package things and send them out to particular sponsors who will be helping out. Just makes life a heck of a lot easier. So I'm gonna get this shelving cleaned off. We're gonna wheel it up front and we're gonna start tearing that CR500 apart. We've got a rack, we've got a bike, let's dig in. All right, we've jumped into chest mount mode. For those of you who geek out on this sort of thing, it is a GoPro Hero 7 shooting 1080, 30 frames per second, super view and stabilization on as well as pro tune and some sort of auto low light thing so haven't used it before wanted to give you guys the hands-on view and now that we are armed with our gloves a 1990 cr500 a wire basket shelf we can go ahead and dig into this thing and i'm going to start with the seat and really you do not need a lot of special tools some guys laugh at me uh, my friends particularly, they see the bikes I build, and to be quite honest, uh, there's nothing special going on here. A few metric tools, maybe a few special tools once in a while, but for the most part, it doesn't take much. Anybody can do this, and I love it when you guys tell me you dug into your builds for the first time, so here we go. All right, so when I start tearing into a bike myself, I like to see what hardware is factory and what hardware is not. Most of the time with used bikes, you end up with a bunch of random hardware in them. And already I can see that though this bike is in fantastic condition for its age, it has a 13 millimeter Ace Hardware Home Depot looking sort of fastener going on here. Uh, they nailed it on the metric, but I don't think that's stock. Something like this would be stock eight millimeter. Maybe somebody can chime in in the comments below uh, if you had one of these growing up, 1990 CR500, but uh, you know, experience tells me that's not the case, but that doesn't mean we can't get it off. Yeah, lock washer, flat washer, that's pretty unusual. So in the tray it goes. We won't be reusing that, but we already have spare parts on our CR500 build. All right, let's see how the filter looks. Well, it's in there. Look at that warning label. That is awesome. Get the seat on the rack. Already making good use of it. Very cool. Tank strap. If I'm strong enough to get it off. Okay, down one, up one, down one. Nowadays, if these bikes have these, KTM doesn't. They're just two straps. So that would probably be kind of a pain in the butt to find. Maybe not for this old bike, but Safekeeping, of course. All right, gotta be careful with this stuff. It may be old, it may be brittle. RM250s used to have a little shroud like this back in the day when their ignitions were mounted inside the airbox. Throw her on the old rack. This is how you know if a filter's old or not. Oh, it's in good shape. Usually if they're too old, 
you touch them and they just disintegrate in your hands. This one doesn't seem to have any product on it. Maybe it dried up. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to leave the filter in there for now. We're going to start deconstructing the rear of the bike and then we're going to get it up in the air, start taking everything else off. Switch over to the old eight milli. I got to be really careful with this stuff. Reason being, I've never taken a CR500 apart, so we don't want to forget where this stuff goes. We will either be putting it in Ziploc bags or we will be putting it back in the holes it came out of, at least for the time being. So far, all of these are the same, so that's nice. I love it when that happens. I can put them all there for now. Doesn't matter if they get a little mixed up. Looks like this will be the only variant. Definitely want to save this funky little guy, this little snail. We got the fender loose. There went the threaded insert. Not threaded insert, but insert for the pipe, like so. Go ahead and get this pipe off. I know the gun sounds violent, but it's actually not doing a whole heck of a lot, so not the end of the world. Still has all the rubber fasteners in it. That's pretty awesome. This guy out, there's a washer left behind, keeping my eye on that stuff. Set her aside, consolidate this a little bit. No wear on this thing, crazy. Pipe is next, stock pipe, not to mention. Slide that off, leave the bolt intact. Look at that thing, that is funky as hell. It's cool though. So now we've got to pull the subframe. You know these bikes? Overall, even modern day, two stroke, four stroke, you know, the concept is the same. A lot of refinement. I don't think that's ever been off. We just lost the nut. Oh, I take that back. Someone greased it, it has been off. Very cool. Oh, good job, bud. I'm just throwing things on the ground today. Blame it on the grease. These are 12 millimeter. To this day, a lot of these are still 12 millimeter. Set those aside before I get too carried away. I'm gonna find all the things I threw on the ground. The nut, oh look at that, right there on the back of the case. Perfect. These parts have changed so little, all in all that you can still look at them and know exactly where they belong if you've done this enough times. Next, we gotta get the uh, boot off the carburetor. Usually just a Phillips screwdriver, still is. Number two Phillips, no big deal. Get in here, you can use the drill too if you have a tip. Just be gentle. So this thing should come right out now. Break it loose a little bit. Car boot, there she is. Sometimes the uh, band clamp that holds it on will come off or scratch the frame or the shock, so take your time. As mentioned, came right off, got hung up on the spring. Clean in there. Nothing crazy, that's nice. Maybe a little dirt we just knocked in. Up on the shelf it goes. Let's do the tank. We're gonna need to get these shrouds loosened up. This thing is in such good shape. Get into the other side. Washer again wants to stay. There's probably some bolts inside there. Let's see, yeah, eight millimeter. So get those out. Pretty straightforward. There we go. Tank should come right off. Got this hose, actually the carburetor hose, we gotta check that. Rock solid, so dang, we're gonna have to uh, get that off without breaking it. It's probably gonna get replaced anyways, but let's see, needles. Hard as a rock. Wiggle that bad boy down. See if we can break the seal there. And we did. You can hear it actually breaking free. Let's see how much fuel comes out all over me, if any. Man, this thing's not moving. 
we're gonna get a fuel surprise nice but the hose broke anyways after all of that uh, special care so oh well it happens we weren't we were using that anyway tanks empty look at the condition that thing is in it's beautiful this thing is very intact super clean underneath did this guy even ride i don't know put it on the rack and there you have it a look at the guts a look at the uh skeleton nowhere crazy really cool really rare find so another thing these videos are good for is uh putting things back later it's at about this point i normally bust out my cell phone start taking pictures of everything the way cables were routed what kind of straps were on the bike holding cables where they go how was the coil bolted on how were the wires looped away from getting damaged things like that look at the radiators they're so straight crazy everything's in such good shape all right moving on let's take some photos of how everything lays out how the cables are and where they go we got our cell phone out I'm gonna take some pictures i don't know why it's so damn zoomed in oh we're in the wrong setting here photo take some pictures of where everything is the way it's routed as you can see the uh, clutch cable goes through the engine mounts you know what side of the frame is the spark plug boot on things like that important stuff where's this cable where's that cable kill switch what have you couple months from now it's all going to come in very handy you'll be able to tell for example hard to see which side of the number plate bolt these cables are on that's important especially when you're riding it and you take a turn and turn too tight pulls the cable opens the slide in the carburetor you're already on the cr500 you don't want no part of that mm, my fat ass is already hungry bust out the trader joe's pretzels mm -hmm. All right, so since I'm already over here stuffing my face, I'm going to go ahead and, on my break, go ahead and uh, place some things in some bags so I know where they go. For example, we had gas tank bolt, gas tank bolt, lower radiator shroud, lower radiator shroud, rear fender, three of those and three washers, and then these uh, super trick, definitely OEM seat bolts. We're going to have to bag those up too and now i'll make myself a little note easy as that rear fender tank and shroud and what was the other thing oh yeah trick seat bolts factory seat bolts factory seat bolts cool love it do the same thing to everything you take apart this is kind of obvious you know i don't need to put that in a bag and label it but i could put it in the bag and know what it is later so just depends on uh how many times you've done it so if it works for you give it a shot if it doesn't do something else let me know what you like these i'll go ahead and put in a bag subframe They'll be pretty obvious just by the way they look. This guy needs to go in the bag with the rear fender. I'm gonna put the little snail in its own bag first just to keep it from getting scratched up. Snail's in his own bag. He can go with the rear fender stuff. And look at that, right in the rear fender. All right, where to next? The bike's still nice and low to the ground, so we're gonna go ahead and start stripping the uh, components off the front. It's a bummer that the number plate cracked. Although I did a little homework and you can still buy complete plastics kits for this bike on the UFO plastic website. They have this sort of red orange color, complete minus the tank. They have all white and they have the blood red, I believe it's called for the, uh, the bikes that are a little older. I think 90 was the first year of this orange and 89 was the blood red. So never fear you can still get plastics for these believe it or not brand new kits get this super sick 90s answer bar pad off it's 
Kind of a uh, collector piece in itself for somebody. Put all this stuff back together. We're gonna have to open the ignition cover to get the other end of that clutch cable out. And that will require the pipe to come off. So we'll let that dangle for now and get back to that when the bike's up in the air. Move on to the kill switch. Get the Phillips tip. Put the screw back where it goes. A lot of times these fall out of the kill switch button, the clamps do. So if you can firm this thing back up, same way you found it, should stay in one piece. And Hondas, these bikes do not run with these kill switches disconnected. If you're having a problem with the Honda starting, don't have a spark, this is one place to check. You would simply tie these wires together. However, then you have to stall the bike to turn it off. So as a safety feature, just try and make it right. So I was moving the little tray and baggies this way and I noticed something kind of interesting. Maybe somebody can chime in in the comments. There's sort of this, this white looks like somebody maybe actually painted it on. I was wondering if this was some sort of, you know, OEM piece, but it kind of looks like Maybe somebody did that themselves, like a mask job. Anyways, not bad, could have fooled me. The brake master cylinder. Let that hang for now. That was easy. That is just a regular zip tie? No, it is one of those types you can release. So for that, you would just grab yourself a skinny little screwdriver like so, and hopefully not break it. There we go. Save that for later. We have pictures, so we know where it belongs. Now the carburetor can pretty much come out. See if we can get that out. Another Phillips screwdriver setup. Oh, nice. The intake boot didn't crack. I'm happy about that. Carburetor hose is intact. Carburetor and throttle assembly is out. Look how clean it is in there. Super nice. Super, super clean. Normally you'll see some dirt built up right here from the uh, air filter side. Nothing. Back to the 12 millimeter. Bars on the rack. Everything is just so nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Gonna look a little different soon. Keep some rags handy. You don't want anything getting in this engine. Even though it is coming apart. Let's get this thing up in the air. Go ahead and get the wheels off of it. The swing arm, suspension, forks. Safety pin, there you go. These stands are amazing, they save your back. I'm now at full working height. You guys can check these out on the website if you like. They're about 300 bucks and they are worth every penny. This one's about three years old and uh, nothing has happened with it at all, nothing bad. Pretty pumped on that. It's still making my life easy. So let's see, what do we wanna pull off next? I'm gonna start with the front wheel and then we can kinda strip the forks off and everything. Actually, we'll start with the brake because it's just hanging free right now. This stuff has not changed much. I know I said it once already, but I mean, as a matter of fact, even these fork guards, you can run 2020 fork guards on these old forks if you want, and, and we probably will. They have really cool little slits in the sides of them since maybe 2018 or 19. I'll show you guys those real quick. I have a pair of those in the shop actually. Let's go look at them. 2019 CRF 450X, you can kind of see the uh, holes and the bolt pattern is exactly the same. You can also put uh, KTM style guards on these. A couple years back, KTMs used to be a 
full wraparound style instead of a gap in the back and those actually fit the Honda as well. If you're looking for an off-road option and want to protect your forks a little more. All right, what's next? Bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. Looks like the wheel's just gonna fall right out. You don't have to slide the axle any which way. That's kind of cool and also kind of dorky looking, but you know, that's just the 2020 me talking. Got a 10 mil set up. He's gonna come flying out at me. These would be pretty hard to mistake for some other component somewhere. I am gonna go ahead and write though, since they look the same, it may or may not matter, but we're gonna say B side for brake side. That's kind of weird. This stud is shorter than the rest. I wonder if it broke or was replaced. Looks like somebody maybe snapped it off, sort of rounded on the end. All right, come on out. Yeah, girl. Nice. Excellent wheel in one piece. I like that. Maybe they should bring that style back. One is shorter than the other? Yes. Shorter on the bottom. Something like that. You would want to go ahead and just put everything back where it came from. That'll help from any confusion down the road and that should conclude our front brake escapades here. We will go ahead and put this, uh, put this on the rack. That feels a little rough. Probably never got greased. Still has uh, powder coating in the frame stops there of all places. Low wear all around. We gotta get some little blankets here. We'll call them for the forks so they can rest comfortably. Don't wanna scratch those up. Two, three, four, that ought to do it. Some forks will come shooting out, so always brace them. I've had one fly out on the floor before. Well, more than one, let's be honest. One, and sometimes when you pull the second fork off this bike or a bike while it's on the lift stand, with all the pressure back here, bike just flips over backwards, so. Need to get the rear wheel off real quick before I pull the other fork. Can tell it wants to flip. That looks like a 30 millimeter maybe. I was wrong, it is not a 30, it's more like a 28 and don't hate. I found a one and one sixteenth that fits perfectly. I did not have a 28, so. She's on there, yeah. I'm gonna be careful you don't flip the bike over or hit yourself in the face with one of these suckers. Axle block, axle nut, and a rubber mallet. That is in there, wow. Not too bad though. A lot of bikes this age would be in a lot worse condition. We should get the chain off real quick. I have to find the master length, there it is. Crusty as hell, now, don't judge me. There's a tool for this. And uh, I have no problem with this method, so put the screwdriver right behind the master link. There you go. We will not be reusing this chain, even though it's probably the original chain. Somebody might even want this thing. Having said that, kinda loosen up that bad boy. Take that out, and away she goes. Back to that rear wheel. Let's see, I don't think I'm gonna have a whole lot of luck spinning that out by hand. So, desperate times call for desperate measures. Go ahead and get anything that works like an axle, say a half inch drive extension. 
And so long as you are not marring this and you can get away with using it as a dowel, should be all right. Keep firm contact so it doesn't slip off, blah, blah, blah. There we go. This will also hold the wheel in the air while you're pulling the axle out. It's got a ton of grease on it. It's not in bad shape. All right, on the rack, pull out your fancy special tool and the wheel comes off. Now you can remove the forks without the bike doing a complete Jackie Chan backflip on you. Your fork. Moving on to the shock, we have to get this upper bolt out and the lower bolt below. So usually it's a 14. Let's see if it's, if I'm right about that. 14, 14. You got it, bud. I'll take the nut, leave the bolt in there for now. Looks dry as a bone. Another 14 down below. This one has no nut, just a threaded uh, clevis down below. I'm glad the impact didn't get that off. That means the proper torque value was set or it was just seized. We'll find out. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys a trick. Instead of using the socket, I'm gonna go ahead and take the 14 millimeter wrench and any wrench close to that size will do really. We'll take the 17. Now, you don't have a ton of leverage in this position. If you grab another wrench, box end, and you slide it in like so, now you have a ton of leverage. So this will come off easy. You just have to make sure this doesn't swivel apart, slip, and hurt yourself. So here goes nothing. There you go. You can see that it broke loose and slipped. And now the impact gun can do the rest. Lift the shock a little bit to take the tension off. And she's a free bird. So put these parts back where you found them. Be very helpful later. Two, this one's threaded, beautiful. Go ahead and make a little bed for this guy too. Out of some clean rags. Got to get this brake off here. Back in the day, they'd have a reservoir way up top for the master cylinder. Nowadays, the fluid is actually captive in uh, the master cylinder itself. In fact, there's a good example of that there. This is 2004, so it has the fluid in it. And even as late as 2002, on the Yamaha, they had a fluid reservoir. So when I'm taking a swing arm out, at least initially, or for a spring and grease. I like to loosen up all of the things related to the brake, brake pedal, what have you, pull the swing arm and pin out, and then everything comes off as an assembly. So the brakes will still be attached to the swing arm, and for now that'll keep things nice and tidy, which is really great until we get into the full teardown and the powder coating and the this and that. So these guys are usually a five millimeter. We were right. The brake pedal itself is usually an eight millimeter, sometimes or six on a Yamaha. And you have to be careful when you pull this brake pin out because a lot of times, or on some models, there's a cotter pin in the back of this, uh, this bolt here in case it were to back out, it would stop, you know, avoiding a dangerous condition or what have you. So I've already checked this one. It does not have a cotter pin. We're good to go. Just something to be aware of, very important. And then, as always, every brake pedal has a spring on the frame, and there she is. And you can just let it hang in there. It's all together. This is all loose. It's gonna come out with the swing arm. So in order to do what I was trying to do, which was remove all of this as in a unit or one assembly, brake and swing arm, the pipe is actually in the way. I won't be able to get this reservoir through unless I take the hose off, thereby making a huge mess which who doesn't love a huge mess? So we're gonna get some eight millimeter bolts popped off. We're gonna get some springs 
all 700 of them rather pulled off and we'll get that pipe out of the way. Grab your favorite spring pulling tool. Makes the job so much easier. One, two, three, 700. I'm gonna take this whole piece out with the pipe instead of taking this bolt out. So that'll go with. Same thing here, gonna remove the bolt above so that it, the hanger goes with the pipe. The sucker should just unplug. There it is. Not too bad, not too bad. Look at that thing. No real buildup in there. Gotta apologize to you guys. I didn't realize how dark the footage was on this side of the bike. Went ahead and went inside and got one of the photo lights. Hopefully you can see the bike a little bit better now. And we will continue taking this bad girl apart. Time to get this broke free. I do not have a 3 8 breaker bar, so a pipe does the job usually. Oh yeah. It's been a while, AKA never. Now I need to get under here and bust free these linkage hardwares. Usually those are 17 millimeter. If you loosen them both up while they're on the bike, it will make it easier to take apart by hand later. So we're gonna do the same trick we did earlier. We're gonna do the double wrench trick, like so. Boom. Sometimes when the double wrench trick just isn't doing the job, you can go ahead and bust out the rubber mallet. There she is. One side of this setup is a 14 millimeter. Other side is a 17. Go ahead and bust those out. With a little look, those will come right out. Perfect. Bone dry, never lubricated, probably ever, which is typical. Get the other one and the chain slider is in the way, but it just broke. So it's no longer in the way. All good. They still make those, believe it or not. There we go. Swing arm is next. Brake is already free. This thing is ready to come out as an assembly. Please do not mind the copious amounts of gardening that are going on down the street. I told myself I wouldn't get upset about it, but it is pissing me off for sure. I hate that distraction, but the show must go on. If you guys see a dead gardener in the news next week, it wasn't me. Oh, check that out. That's a machined piece. I've never actually seen a swing arm that had a uh, machined piece welded to the casting. That's pretty awesome. Once again, with our little trick, And that does not want to move. So what I'm going to have to do is apply a little bit of heat in here to get that to come out. And it's not a big deal. I'll show you guys how to do it. Get this hose out of there because for sure that will be melted before long. I'm actually not sure why that's pinched in there in the first place. Ready for heat. Unfortunately, we had a casualty. There is a chain slider down there. Sorry, bud. I think TM Design Works actually makes one still. So now you're going to want to apply some heat. Not too long. The idea is to heat up the components that are around the main pin holding the swing arm in and it will help uh, get the bolt out. A little above, a little below. Didn't quite do the job, so a little more heat. And if we cannot get it out this time, there is an upgrade to get this bolt out. So hopefully we don't have to go there, but. All right, she's still stuck in there, so. 
unfortunately kind of a bummer but not the end of the world we just need to bust out the old air chisel now this is going to get the job done nine times out of ten i've never seen it not work the problem is you don't want to mess up this main pin so we just have to be careful do a couple tests on it see how it goes if you're using one of these use ear protection they're loud as hell and uh, safety glasses aren't really a bad idea either so all right if you're going to use one of these make sure to also use the heat first it'll help a lot and you really just want to try not to damage anything That was not bad. Not bad at all, which is a good thing because we don't want to damage anything, as mentioned. So that was pretty quick and painless. Now that that is over with, we can go ahead and continue with uh, the first trick. And now that it's moving, it's not a problem at all. So again, this will act as a replacement pin when the other pin comes out. So the swing arm won't fall on the ground. And yeah, pretty crusty. As you can see, water, rust, just kind of years of being in there unlubed pretty standard nothing special no big deal she's free this thing may be really hot so in this case we're good but if you've used the heat trick just be aware of that you could get burned and we will set this aside swing arm is ready to be removed let's do that pin out There it is. In great condition, I might add. On the rack with the brakes, one piece. Rack is filling up. We are on the home stretch. All we really need to do now is get the clamps out of the frame, drain the coolant out of the engine and radiators, remove the engine and set aside the electronics. Uh, after that, it's pretty much down to breaking the frame bits and pieces off and getting the thing ready to go get powder coated probably going to keep the same shafts to white maybe a little bit brighter white we'll see what happens all right so it's time to drain the radiator i recommend going over to a rubber glove instead of the other type you are probably going to get your hands wet so you'll also need the eight millimeter in most cases sometimes a 10 we're about to find out and then a bucket to catch all this stuff you don't want it getting on the ground and pets like to drink it and it's just better to capture everything of course we should probably get a rag too. This stuff ends up in all of the little deep grooves of the stand most of the time. Okay, so with your rag in place, you're gonna go ahead and pop the 10 millimeter bolt out of the water pump. You'll start to get a trickle, which is normal. But if you want the coolant to really come out at a rampant pace, go ahead and pop the radiator cap and it will flow like hell. Go ahead and install your drain plug back in when you're done. Finger tight is good enough. Don't forget to plop your radiator cap back on. And now you can start disconnecting all your hoses, which there will be more residual coolant. So be ready for that. Go ahead and leave your rag down there for now. We can go ahead and leave this hose on the engine for now. It's connecting the cylinder to the lower end of the engine, the bottom end. So we do need to get this guy out. But look at these radiators, they're just in perfect condition. The, uh, there's no damage here, it's crazy. Especially for a Sage, look how square that is. Super cool. Anyways, you got three eight millimeter bolts in both sides. You got this little crossover tube here, which Honda still used until the last gen of the CR250. That bike over there still has the same thing on it freeze bird oh there we go go ahead and very gently remove your radiator louvers these are just plastic these ones are super old these are the same on bikes all the way up to modern day i just don't want to break them it's the most important thing i don't know how hard these are to get for a 1990 so there we go nice on the rack. Next side. Ooh, this one's a little stiff. We'll try the back side instead. That seemed to work a little easier without breaking. One more. There we go. 
We good, man. Down low, we have a little crossover hose here. So we'll need to get in there with a screwdriver or a six millimeter. That's another one of these band clamps. There's something I didn't get a photo of right there. The way this breather, the way this overflow and ignition wire is coupled together with the zip tie at the frame. That'll come in handy later. That will make it much easier to get down to this guy down here. Sometimes it helps to break the seal, if you will. There she is. A lot of times you'll find residual coolant in these, so before you throw it on the rack and spill stuff everywhere, just go ahead and empty them out a little better. Never a bad idea to retighten these clamps when you set the radiators aside somewhere because they will fly off otherwise. Now that we have better access to some of these electronics and the radiators are, are out of the way, we can go ahead and take some photos of exactly how everything sits. Super important if you want to route everything without getting a pinched wire later. Go ahead and start taking some of these little tank grommets off the frame. They're in killer shape, so we don't need to try and source new ones, which is great. This one, we need to take the coil off first. There it is. Some dampers like this on newer bikes, like say the YZ250 with the aluminum frame, you'll have a damping pad like this. It'll have an adhesive on the back and it'll actually be stuck to the frame like a sticker. Another little factory zip tie here. So we have a photo of that, we know where it goes. And the uh, stator or generator here is solidly wired up to this point. So thankfully we can take these apart. We're going to do so very gently. These connectors look to be in pretty great shape, which is nice. And now when we pull the engine out, you know, this stuff won't all be hanging off of it, the coil and everything else. Undo the spark plug. Well, here's something I haven't seen. This clamp is metal, so I have to open the tang to loosen it. That's a first for me. That's some old school stuff right there. Let everything sort of come on out, slide it through the frame, and then we can take the ECU out, which I would be willing to bet it's very hard to find one of these nowadays. Most of the time they just slide right off the frame, they're in some sort of a rubber sleeve. This one's covered in oil or premix or something disgusting. This thing looks like it's has the rubber sleeve I'm talking about, but it's sort of dirty and hard to tell. I really don't want to break this. So I'm just gonna take my time with it. We're gonna have to try something different here with the uh, ignition sleeve because it is not coming off. And I'd be willing to bet that if that breaks, I'm not gonna find one too easily. And uh, granted, given its age. So we're gonna try a little heat, see if we can warm up this rubber boot or this rubber sleeve. It's sitting on two metal tangs, which are a little bit corroded. And I obviously don't wanna use the torch. I don't want to melt this thing, so if I can get it to loosen up and then slide off a little easier, that would be great because this is probably a very hard to find piece.
there you go it worked that was awesome sort of break the crust if you will and there it is yeah those things are pretty pretty mucked up but overall they're in pretty good shape still too intact I did not want this to rip it's filthy but nothing a little scrub can't fix so all the electronics are intact together roll them up throw them on the rack as I've been going I've been putting things in Ziploc bags and labeling them except for that one we know it's a subframe set aside ready to go months pass sometimes between bike builds being started and completed and it's really nice to just grab a bag and go oh this is for the radiators oh this is for the rear fender oh this is for whatever so moving along you may remember that the pipe used to be in the way of this ignition cover and we couldn't get the clutch cable out so if you've never taken a clutch cable out this is how you do it it's a larger phillips screwdriver not a number two though it would work and you don't want to strip them so better to just use the right size rubber gasket stayed in one piece we do have a little moisture in here which is not unusual at all and this thing is no different than any modern day cable we need to slack out the cable at the perch in order to get a little slack down inside of the stator that way we can get this thing out 10 millimeter and an all 16s as my buddy would call it So you get a little slack. Once you create a little slack down here, then you'll end up being able to move everything more freely in this area here. Bust out the old needle nose. And that's it. Everything comes right out. Roll that up. Put it on the rack. Bust out the old spark plug. You're gonna to need to remove the spark plug because when you go to lift the engine, most of the time the spark plug will hit whatever cross member may be around and it just really helps with the difficulty of removing the engine. Sometimes the Kickstarter's in the same boat, but most of the time you do not have to take the Kickstarter off. Wouldn't have hurt to have taken this off a long time ago, but that's all right. There's usually four bolts, four washers underneath, four washers on top, and these usually have some sort of an insert on them. If I could get one out, we'll use the spark plug right here. Just go on top. As you can see, there's a little bit of a shoulder to it if you will so just remember that if you don't have these and you start to tighten your fender up into your triple clamp it starts to crush the plastic so then your fenders break or they fit sideways or they just don't last as long so we are coming down to the home stretch on this bike we have the triple clamps installed everything is in such good shape we have the engine left to remove and really the only thing that stands between us and making that happen are a few bolts you have the upper head stays here, you have a mounting bolt here, and you have a mounting bolt here. Of course, the main pin for the swing arm crosses through the engine as well, but it's already out, so we are literally just a couple bolts from getting this engine out, sitting it on the rack, and we're pretty much done at that point. So on Hondas and most bikes, they are notoriously 12 and 14 millimeter. These are typically 14 millimeter down below as well. And let's see, 12, boom, done. 12. Not a boom done, but it's a 12. We need to get a wrench on the back side of that. What do you know? There's a 12 right there. Boom, done. And now we need to move over to the 14. So here's what I've used on this bike so far. There's a 12. There's a 10. There's a 14. Here's a 13 for the seat bolts that didn't belong in the bike in the first place. You know, uh, a little screwdriver as a pick, a Phillips here and there, and a 28 millimeter for the swing arm main pin. The uh, triple clamp will probably be a 32 or a 30 up top, 
And I mean, that's that's all there is to this. We use this, a spring puller tool. I mean, if you guys aren't uh, digging into your bikes or you have apprehensions about it, get after it. You guys can do it. It's no problem. So toy. Had to get a ratchet for that. All good. This is also not uncommon for these to spin. I was surprised the 12s came off as easy as they did. There's that. There's that. Head stays are out. Through bolt here, through bolt here. Engine comes out. Done. Now the last bolt's gonna have some tension on it because the engine's weight is sitting right on it. That thing is, it's crusty. Using light tension, since it's not really affixed to anything, it sort of comes out like a screw. And that is extremely rusty. Lots of rust dust. All right, let's get this thing out of there. Got a spot on the rack. Now it's a matter of just getting the right angle and popping this sucker out. Rotating. I lifted up and I lifted back. Now I'm just trying to spin it. Getting hung up on the water pump a little bit. We need to go out the other direction because of that. It's my first CR500. No longer a CR500 virgin, I guess you could say. I'm gonna go ahead and lower this a little bit. Get sort of more of a, give a little more of an edge on this engine here. Kind of be above it rather than side by side with it. I'll get a little better leverage on it this way. All I've really done is managed to get it just stuck. You've got to try and remember how it came out so that when you go back in and everything's nice and shiny and powder coated, it doesn't get all beat to hell, but I did a pretty poor job. Ah, there she is. I was getting hung up on this quite a bit, but looks like as long as you can keep everything in line here when you slide it out, it's probably a little less painful. So she's out. Engine's free. Look at that. Just a filthy pile of frame. Let's go ahead and spin this thing off. Real simple. We have a spanner nut holding us in. Yes, there it is. Super crusty. These should never really be too tight. Most of the time you can get them out by hand. This one's nasty, so it needs a little uh, cleaning before it comes out. Might even be able to hold it with this rag and spin it off. Yep, no problem. These are never really that tight. So you can actually use this as a poor man's steering damper, as they say, by over -tightening, tightening it a little bit and slowing your steering down. Or if it's just too loose in general, this is where you would go to tighten up some of that slop. And pull this out. We'll have a dust seal on the top followed by a bearing. And we will take that out also. There we go. That. Here's the dust seal. There's the bearing. Super nasty. Just kind of keep everything together right here. Then I can put the top triple clamp back on this as well. And sit it on the rack. Someone did get in here and grease this, so that's good. It's uh, since seen a little bit of moisture and water, so not the end of the world. Pretty standard stuff. Now we can sit all this back together, and my friends, you are looking at a beautiful set of 1990 CR500 triple clamps. Can you even believe it? Probably not. Look at that. And there you have it. Down to the bones. All I need to do is take the foot pegs off, some of the chain rollers, some of the bolts I put back in. We can get this thing out to powder coat. Powder coat will be handled by Apex Coatings, Monterey, California. and you may have seen their work on our CR250 giveaway bike last year. Amazing stuff. Get old Nasty out of there. Get her on the rack. Close enough. 
there you have it there is a 1990 cr500 on a rack now that the cr500 is broken down next up cr250 on the chopping block this thing is crusty it is not going to be nearly as nice as the 500 i mean just look at it so anyways we're going to get this up on the lift stand we're going to move on with the video come on ugly Guys, that's it. That's a CR500 on a rack. That's the whole bike. So got this whole thing torn down. I'm excited to get this thing cooking officially. We have parts going out to sponsors. It's gonna be a badass time. I wanted to introduce to you guys a few people who are helping out with this build. One of the first is, maybe you've heard of him, Adam Miller, MRE, Miller Racing Engines up in Canada. He's gonna be taking the 500cc engine and doing some top secret stuff inside. I've got no permission, unfortunately, to see what he does. Check him out in this month's motocross action. They stuffed a CR500 inside of this 2016 KTM. These are super exotic bikes. They had to cut the entire frames out of the front, get these engines to fit. Super pumped to have him on board. We have HYGGE, Huga Performance doing the exhaust systems, full cone pipe, both bikes, CR250 and 500. We got a bunch of really cool stuff lined up. Can't wait to show you. Apex Coatings will be taking the frame for powder coating. They'll probably be doing some ceramics for us as well, brakes, what have you. Talking to SGB Racing back east, suspension components, finishing, DLC, things like that. So much more to come and the CR250 awaits a similar fate. I'll do a second video for that bike. That way you guys can see the breakdown procedure and just how ratty the CR250 is compared to the 500. The 500 is in really great condition for its age. The only two bolts I pulled out of it that didn't belong on it were the two seat bolts right in the beginning, a pair of 13 millimeter Ace Hardware bolts. Everything else, 100% factory, every strap, every fastener, just a gorgeous motorcycle. So if you guys have any feedback for me regarding some of the questions I asked as I tore this bike apart, or you wanna leave me some feedback related to the chest rig style camera I used today, let me know if you liked it or not. It's the first time trying it. I did an audio test, it seemed like it would be okay, but I wanna make sure you guys are getting the, uh, the best content possible while I go through these builds. So Instagram, at MX Revival, find me on Facebook, www.mxrevival.com. I got all kinds of awesome stuff I'd love to share with you guys, things that I personally love to use. So Dirt Bike Magazine, thank you, we won't let you down, and I can't wait to show you guys the rest. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.